So in today's lesson, we're learning about graphing cubic functions. And so a lot of this is review. We're talking about A, H, and K, what they do. They do the same thing. The only thing that's new is we have a new equation. So our general form is y equals a times, in parentheses, x minus h, q, hence the cubic function, plus k. And so that means our parent function is y equals x cubed. So we're dealing with the x cubed function. And so we're going to go through a, h, and k and what they mean. So a, if a is positive, then the graph goes up. It goes from the bottom left to the top right. And hopefully you can read what I am writing in here. Bottom left to top right, it has exactly one x-intercept. The graph looks something like this. And if A is negative, then the graph goes from top left to bottom right. So it's the opposite. It still has one x-intercept. Starts up here, goes down, something like that. Obviously, I struggle to draw on this thing, but hopefully you can get the gist of it. Our, so normally we'd be talking about our vertex point, but with cubic functions, we would talk about our inflection point, and that is at h, k. And so if we remember h, that identifies the, let me switch colors here, it identifies the horizontal shift. So moving left and right. And I always feel like because it's H, horizontal should be easy to remember. The K value is our vertical shift. Up and down. Now, I stole this from another teacher, but we always can say X's lie to you. So it's the same with our X value. If we wanted to move left, we don't put negative, it's not a negative, it's positive H. Right is negative. Our K value stays the same. So up is plus, down is minus. So X is Y, X, and vertical shift stays the same. If we look at A, if A is between zero and one, so if you remember, if the number out front is um, between 0 and 1, the absolute value, then it's vertically compressed. It's getting closer to the x-axis. If a is greater than 1, then the graph is vertically stretched. It's pulling away from the x-axis. And so hopefully you remember that from all the other uh, functions we've done this year. So let's look at a couple examples. And when you're, when you're doing these, you need to plug in values for x and then um, and see where it goes. So I'm going to always start with 0. So when x is 0, 1 half times 0 cubed is 0. 1 cubed is going to be 1, but I multiply it by 1 half. So I'm going to do here. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 1 half times negative 1 is negative 1 half. So when x is negative 1, y is negative 1 half. And then when I plug in, if I plugged in 2 for x, 2 cubed equals 8. Two cubed equals eight. So you can see these grow very quickly. One half of eight is four. So from this side, the graph looks something like that. When I plug in negative two, negative two cubed is negative eight times one half gives me negative four. So 
and the graph reflects about the origin. That means if you shifted, not so much shifted, but if you rotated it like a clock, the top right, if you rotated it this way, it would be on top of itself. When we look at 2x cubed, now it's being stretched. When x is 0, it's still y is still 0. But now when x is 1, 1 cubed is 1, but times 2 is up here. When x is negative 1, it's going to be down here. But we're not going to draw a straight line. We're going to loop it a little bit because we know when x is 2, 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 8 is 16. So it takes us out of the graph in both directions. If there is a negative, so if there's a negative in front of the parentheses, then the graph reflects over the x-axis, or if it's just negative x. So it could look like this, or like this. Either way, it reflects over the x-axis. If there's a negative just inside the parentheses, and we haven't talked about these a lot, then the graph reflects across over the y-axis. So it has to look exactly like this for that to work. And that just means it fold, you would fold it over the y-axis rather than the x-axis. Let's look at a couple quick examples. So if we look at y equals x minus 3 cubed, that means it shifts to the right 3. So it starts at 3, 0. When you move, when you plug x, 4, 4 for x, you get 1 cubed, which is 1. When you plug in 2 for x, you get negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. If I plugged in 5, that would give me 8, way up here. So my graph is going to look something like this. And you're going to get used to drawing these because um, they grow and they grow very quickly. When I have x plus 3 cubed, that means it shifts to the left 3. So this is right. This means right. And this one is left. Remember, x is lie. So this one shifts 3 to the left. The same points. Now, here, this means it's down. So it shifts 3 down. We're starting at 0, negative 3. I move 1 to the right and 1 up, and 1 to the left and 1 down. Now, if I moved, when I put x is 2, 2 cubed is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. So I can plot that one, but not on the left-hand side. And x cubed plus 3 means up. So it starts at 0, 3. As I move to the right, it's going to go out of the screen. As I move to the left, though, when I plug in negative 2, negative 2 cubed is negative 8, plus 3, which is negative 5. It would be down here. So it's going to look like that. So that one, the, the inflection point shifts. So the H and K, that shows you where your inflection point moves. Okay. So let's flip it over to the next page. All right. So it asks us to draw a table with at least three points to graph, to plot, graph the equation, name the inflection point, and then describe the transformations. So I like to list my inflection point, and I look at where it shifted, my H and K. I can see it shifts to the left, 5. And the A value out front, 1 third, means it's compressed by 1 third. So that means I shifted left, 5. So I'm going to be left, 5. If my normal inflection point is at 0, 0, I want 1, 2, 3, I'm going to move 5 to the left. And now I want to graph it. 
So it's at negative 5, 0. Now, at the plot points, create your little table. So now I know when x is negative 5, the rest of the equation, which is 1 third x plus 5 cubed equals 0. When x is negative 4, negative 1 third times 1 cubed is just 1 third. So when it's compressed, it doesn't grow very much. And it's going to do the same thing on the other side. It's going to go down. Now, sorry about that. When it's negative 3, so I have 1 third times 2 cubed. That's going to be 8 over 3. So 8 over 3 is like 2 and 2 thirds. So it's going to be right here. And I'm just going to do the opposite. So at negative 7, it's going to be negative 2 and 2 thirds down. So I'm looking for those points. And you graph it. On number 2, we have negative 2x cubed plus 3. So we know the negative 2 when we do inflection. When we, we, do, we need to find our inflection point. Uh, the negative 2 means it reflects across the x-axis. It's stretched by 2 because the 2 is there. And that plus 3 means it shifts up 3. So that means it moves up to here. So our inflection point is at 0, 3. All right. So now let's try to plot some points. So x and then f of x. That's the whole equation. So when x is 0, we know f of x is 3. When x is 1, that's negative 2 times 1 cubed plus 3. So 1 cubed is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So we know we have a point at 1, 1. And we have to have a point opposite of that. So at negative 1, we would go up 2 rather than, since we went to the right one, we move down 2. When we go to the left one, we move up 2. When x is 2, we have negative 2 times 2 cubed plus 3. So 2 cubed is 8. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16 plus 3 which would put us at negative 13. So that means we're going at 2, we're all the way off the screen down here. And so it's going to look something like that, and it's getting st growing very steeply. I'm going to skip, I'm not going to graph number 3, but I'm going to tell you it shifts right 5, And down 2. So it should be right here. It's going to look something like this and that. But I need you to find, plot your points. Always plot your points. All right, 4 and 5 are a little different. 4 says write a cubic function matching the description below. So we've done this before on our tests and quizzes. The graph of f of x equals x cubed has been transformed so that its inflection point is 4, negative 1, and it is vertic vertically stretched by a factor of 4. What is the new equation? So we know we have f of x. We know we're going to have x 
plus or minus something cubed. And so if we look, its inflection point is 4, negative 1. That means the x shifts to the right 4. To shift to the right 4, that means h has to be minus 4 because the x lies. It has to be the opposite. And then the y value is negative 1. So that means vertically it moved down 1. It stays the same. So outside is negative 1. And then we say it's vertically stretched by a factor of 4. That is our a value. So we get f of x equals 4 times x minus 4 to the third power minus 1. So does everybody understand what I just did there? That, those are the ones you guys usually get pretty, pretty easily. All right. It says write the cubic function shown in the graph below. So first of all, we need to figure out what's our inflection point. And I think we can all decide. It's our IP is at 0, negative 3. So now the hard part is figuring out what is the A value. What is A? I think we can agree it's going to be positive because it's going up from left to right. So we know it has to be positive. Now, how do we figure out what our A value is? Well, what I would say is look at your graph. Where does it actually cross a point? So the next point that I actually see it hits is here at 3, negative 2. So that means it moved to the right 3, but only moved up 1 from our inflection point. So in order for it to only move up one point, so that means if we're going to plug in those values and we're solving for A, think of it this way. So we know at this point 3, negative 2, so we know negative 2 has to equal A times x minus h. And in this case, we know our h value is 0. So it just equals 3 cubed. What's our k value? Well, our k value is negative 3. Does everybody see that? Our k value is negative 3. So what I'm going to do now is just normal algebra. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I get 1 equals a times 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27. So now how do I get a by itself? I have to divide by 27 both sides. And so my a value is 1 over 27. So I can say my general equation is f of x equals... 1 over 27 times x cubed, because my h value is 0, minus 3. So all I did, I know the inflection point. So that means I know my h and k values. I know where the next point is at. It's at 3, negative 2. So I use those values and plug them in, and then I solve for a. And there you have it. So that is graphing cubic functions. Hopefully you enjoyed that this week. If you have questions, definitely, definitely contact myself or your teacher. Thank you.